Right, I don't know about you, but I am sick and tired of waiting for Team Cherry to release Silk Song. I am fed up. This game was announced in 2019, four years ago. What? This game has been in development for way too long. And the worst thing is, Team Cherry just stays silent most of the time and doesn't communicate anything. What happened, Team Cherry, huh? What happened? Did you forget your Twitter password or something? Like, what, what happened there then? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Although, we did actually get a release window for the game of about 12 months. And today, June 12th, was supposed to be the last day of that release window. And then that just didn't happen. So, when I saw this tweet saying it was delayed, I decided, you know what, I've sat by and done nothing and waited for too long. It's time to actually do something about it. I'm going to make the damn game myself. And in 3D too, because, uh, why not? Obviously, I started with the player character, Hornet. Pretty easy to model since they're mostly black and made of void. There we go, the model is Dunzo. Notice that I didn't add the red cloak thingy she's got going on. I'm planning on adding that later with some cloth physics. You know, some, some proper fancy shit. Next step is the player's movement. All right, This is where we need to take a bit of artistic liberty since we're transferring Silk Song from 2D to 3D. The way I see it, we've got two options. Do the same kind of viewpoint from the side, like a side scroller, but make it with 3D models. But that's kind of boring, I reckon. A third person game would be way better. So once I'd sorted that and got it working smoothly, it was onto the animation, because I mean, can't really leave it like this, can I? Luckily, there's this thing called Mixamo, which has a bunch of animations I can use, so I don't have to spend ages doing it myself. And it's free too, so uh, you gotta love it. Here we go, now it's kind of looking like an actual game. But this isn't 18+, plus. alright, it's supposed to be a Peggy 7. Put some bloody clothes on, love. So I modelled the cloak in Blender, put it into Unity, and uh, oh. Oh yeah, that's not right, is it? Right, apparently I need a two-sided shader for this to work. Luckily, this free one is right here and uh, it, uh, it don't work with the universal render pipeline. Which, of course, is what I'm using. <sighs> it's never that straightforward, is it? Right, apparently this one includes the one for the URP, but it's 10 quid. Well, I'm a YouTuber. You think I got a real job? I can't afford that. Well, that's out of the question. So, uh, looks like I'm doing it myself. Right, here we are. I've just figured it out, right? And I'm going to give you a little tutorial as well. You know, just in case you need it. So, right, you go over here. You click Create Material. Then you come up here. And you click Both. Yep, that's, uh... That's literally it. Why couldn't that just be the default, man? It took me an embarrassingly long time to figure that out. Anyway, now, right. The cloth physics. You need to make the cloak all, you know, droopy and stuff, all realistic. It's a simple thing. Doesn't really add too much to the game, so hopefully it won't take too long. Uh, past Alex. How naive you are. Hi, I'm Alex from the future. The date is currently October 23rd, 2077, and nuclear war has wiped out 90% of humanity. Because it took me absolutely ages to figure this out. I could not get it to work for the life of me. It kept doing stuff like this, and stuff like this, and I don't even know what's going on here, but it's not right. Tried looking for a decent tutorial on YouTube, and I just couldn't find one. I looked at one that was like a decade old. I looked at some old forum posts, which also just didn't help. I was even looking at a furry tutorial at one point because I was just that desperate, which by the way, didn't help. So I sat through that for nothing. Anyway, point is I couldn't find my answer on Google. So I just had to figure it out myself. And the problem with that is I don't even know what half this stuff is. Like here we are, sleep threshold. What, what does that mean then? The mass normalized kinetic energy threshold below which a non-kinematic rigid body may go to sleep. What? English, please, mate. Oh, right. The way I ended up figuring it out was I just randomly changed all these values and eventually it just worked. 
Don't know why. Don't know how. But it's working now, so I I'm not asking questions. <sighs> Note to self. Never use cloth ever again. Anyway, moving on from that fucking fiasco, right? This game is pretty damn boring, right? There's nothing to really do. So adding combat, that's got to be the next thing. So I made a little animation for the sword, although I couldn't go too mental with the animation because swinging the arms around, as I've already said, messes up the cloak. That thing's, that thing's a nightmare. And to be honest, it looked terrible. So I needed a way to make it actually look kind of decent. And here's what I came up with. You see here how there's like a little white kind of after image effect when you, you slash your sword in the real game. Well, I thought I could do something like that. And luckily enough for me, there are a bunch of tutorials for it actually. Now tell me, how come there are tutorials for this, but not for cloth physics, right? What, what's going on there? Unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. Anyway, turned out pretty damn good I reckon. So now we've got the ability to attack, but nothing to actually attack. The uh, game's a bit empty, isn't it? It's just like the endless abyss. So let's sort out some enemies. Exhibit A, this little slug thingy. It looks like it just walks from point A to point B, back to point A. So that's easy enough to translate to 3D. Just walks backwards and forwards between two points. Wicked. Exhibit B, this, uh, this flying one. Seems to follow you around and then charge at you every so often. This one was a bit harder to make. No, no, that's not right. No, de definitely not. Ah, there we go. Bang. Two enemies, dunzo. I even added some knockback so you can slap them around a little bit. Isn't that cool? I thought it was cool. Now, the player can attack the enemies, but the enemies can't attack the player because we haven't added a health bar yet. No messing around, just rob the one straight from the real game. Now, there's only one other enemy in the Moss Grotto that I need to add. The boss. Also this thing, but I forgot about this guy when I was making this, so uh, j just pretend he don't exist. Anyway, yeah, the boss. So I made a model for it, slapped it into Unity, and it did not work at all. I haven't done anything different, so why has that happened then? Right, why does it look like that? It looks fine in Blender, what, what's going on? Almost looks like it's cell shaded or something. Yeah, I have no idea what's happened there. Uh, straight to Google it is. Yep, couldn't find anything. Sounds about par for the course. I suppose I just fart around with it and hope it works itself out. So I messed around with it in Blender a little bit, trying to reverse the faces, change the material, but none of that did anything. Then I clicked apply scale and this happened. What? I haven't done anything different, why, why is this so broken? Then I messed around with it a bit more and I don't know what I did, but something I did must have fixed it because it's fine now. So that was weird and a massive time sink for no reason. Thanks Unity, thanks for that one mate. Look, I know I got this engine for free, but I want a damn refund. Anyway, the boss has two attacks. Charging at the player and hitting the roof to make stuff fall down. The charging attack was no problem since I've already done the same thing for the flying enemy. So we got that sorted already. And when the boss smacks the top of the roof, it either drops down some enemies or the stalagmite things. And although in the actual game it only drops down the slug enemies, we'll, uh, we'll throw the flying ones in anyway, you know, make, make it a bit more interesting. And for the stalagmites, pretty easy again, just slap a rigid body onto it and then it's affected by gravity. And then just randomly generate all the attacks. Wicked, the coding for the boss is all sorted now. However, this grey box, you know, it looks a bit rubbish, doesn't it? Let's fix that. So I modelled a cave in Blender with a bunch of moss and stuff dotted around. Then I like those lily pad things in the background over there, so I made some of those as well. And it looks uh, looks kind of uh, shit. Probably because it's all dark and dreary, alright? We need to get some lighting going on. Boom. Much better. To be honest, I think I might have gone a bit too mental with the post-processing. But I mean, it looks alright, it looks alright. 
Now time to remake the entire rest of the game, and it will still probably be finished before the real Silk Song comes out. 